Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode of LR Live, we are back at Ali Sport. Now, not for the reasons you might think, although that will be coming later. Uh, you can see here, I've driven down in the Disco 3 and I've now got designer mud. One of the things we're going to be doing is fitting a EGR blanking kit to the Discovery 3 and the guys at Ali Sport will be doing a remap to tell the vehicle that it's got the EGR uh, blanked off and that's because obviously it's uh, post 2006. Anything before 2006 I think you can just do it without telling the ECU but obviously it's 2009 so we have 2008 so we have to tell it that uh, it's been blanked off so that's going to be something we're doing a bit later it might be tomorrow um, if it's tomorrow, we will be camping locally in the roof tent and I'm pleased to say it's gorgeous here. I left uh, Liverpool this morning, it was pouring with rain, so really pleased about that. But what we're here for first is we are doing something to their Defender 90. So this is Ali Sports Puma 90. They've sold the vehicle and the new owner would like some panoramic glass. So um, as part of the channel if you like because I've done these before I said I'd uh, come along and fit it for them so hopefully we've got a template in our kit um, if we haven't don't worry we can address that it's not a problem um, the way the templates work is they are designed to replicate the standard aperture you have in your 90 or your 110 um, for the rear window so the design of the glass itself is back printed so that you've got a feathered um, black infill if you like around the outside uh, to cover up your nasty cut work um, and then the actual aperture that uh, you'll be able to see through is the same size as a standard window and that just makes it easier because if you've got regular windows and you want to take those out and put the the panoramic glass on you can do that it's not not a problem it's much easier or you can just cut it out to size so if you guys don't have uh, windows in your vehicle already, you've just got the, uh, the hard top, don't worry, uh, all the measurements are very easy to lay out on the outside of the vehicle and I'll show you how to do it now. But the one thing you're going to have to do first is get this out. And I did say before we we're going to leave it in, but um, I've changed my mind, we're going to get this out. So there's two tabs that are riveted onto this steel capping. Now they're not um, regular rivets, they're like pop rivets, steel ones, so they are quite hardy. So I'm actually going to have a go at drilling these out as much as I can because it'll just make them easier to lift. So we can just pop these up out. Yeah, that is the trick. It does help if you just take the heads off those rivets slightly. There we go. Now we don't want to go mad here because again, you don't want to damage the panel, but you just wiggle it. There we go. Now, um, you have got some sticky stuff on here. You might need a knife just to cut that off the panel, but there we go. That is all free. So we're gonna to have to measure our aperture here. So because this vehicle's not originally uh, fitted with the windows, we're gonna to have to measure up and put them where we want them. So uh, from the, the seam here, so the back of the door, take a measurement from here backwards of 210. That's 210 mil. And on the rear, we do the same thing, but it's 160. Okay, so we've got our marks there. And then from the top seam, you can just see there's a rubber piece here. To the bottom, you wanna go 50 down. So again, and then same again from the bottom. We've got a piece of aluminum angle. So it won't bend and it'll be perfectly straight. So. So for your rounded corners, you want to use a roll of masking tape, put it in the corner so it's touching the top and the side and just do a little radius there, look. All right, hopefully you can just see there, I've done a little starting drill, two drill holes there together to start my blade on. There we go. Right, so we had a little bit of a wobble at the top there on the blade but otherwise nice clean cut. 
So a couple of things that were important there is obviously when I got to this stage here, I knew how to turn. I just lifted the um, jigsaw away from the body so as not to damage the capping because this isn't going to be covered. Went up and then when I came to join here, I just made sure that I put a little bit of weight on pressure on that panel so it fell inwards rather than falling outwards. So you can see there, I just simply used a jigsaw. It didn't take any time at all. This is thin aluminium. That's a nice, sharp, fine um, metal saw blade on there. Um, and the fact that it's cordless really helps as well. We've now got to just apply this trim that comes in the kit. Now this is just a finishing trim that never actually used to come with the kits. So this is quite a new thing. Um, and this just pushes round. So I'm gonna start it uh, at the bottom here. and just snip at the bottom. It's not just a cheap rubber trim that you'd get in some other kits. Um, it has got the grippers on the inside, the stainless steel grippers, so it gets a nice finish. And I think that just makes the job look a lot tidier. You can just see there when we've gone up a little bit, that was well with a blade bent. So unfortunately that is gonna sit like that but you could probably just move this down a bit look to disguise it and now it's straight with the kit you do get everything you need now you've got these little applicators for the primer now the primer has to go both on the bodywork and on the glass on the printed area of the glass and you let that dry for 10 minutes on both sides and that just gives it a really good key for this bonding agent to stick to. So we're gonna do that first. They also give you some wipes, um, so we can actually wipe the glass clean first. And we'll do that on the panel and the glass, just so everything's clean. And you even get some very attractive gloves. Actual tape wasn't sticking, so I'm really hoping this hasn't been ceramic coated, because that could cause us a bit of an issue. But this wipe should get rid of anything that's on there. And we use the same wipe now on the glass. The mat area is wider on one end than the other. So that is going to be our rear. That's our front. That's got the logo on it. So we'll put the logo at the back, but let's get the primer on and we're ready to go. No huge rush with this. You can take your time because although it has to dry for 10 minutes, that's all. You can leave it for a bit longer if you need to. So don't worry about that. But basically, try not to drip it. Okay, these little cotton buds are incredibly absorbent. So. This is where you have to be a bit more careful that you're not gonna get any drips. It's okay to get a drip on the actual panel that you're bonding, but you don't want to get it on the vehicle. So I don't know if you can see here um, on this nozzle, it's actually got a V shape in it. Now the reason this is great is because when you actually put your mastic or your bonding glue on here, you want it to be in a ridge, sort of like a mountain range that goes all the way along. So when we get this on the vehicle, we're going to use this piece here just to guide us against the panel. And then we're going to just literally keep that on the panel as we draw it across and squeeze out all of our bonding glue onto here. And that should make the job a lot easier. And we'll get a peak that's probably about, I don't know, 12 mil deep. Now don't worry if you're not a, a master at this, it's quite hard on the hands. Just make sure you get a nice line all the way across. Doesn't matter how unattractive it is. You can see where it goes. Don't worry about making it, just go from there and we'll lift it up, just don't drop it. So up against the body, that's it. And I'm gonna make it into position, I hope. Thank you very much. That's right. That's perfect. So I'm just working it up and down a little bit, just to try and flatten it out all the way around, left and right, just a touch. So what we wanna do is make sure that it's level with the bottom of the door, uh, the bottom of the side panel. If you've got the glass, it'll stick better. Just on there, stop it dropping more than it should. We are in a treat. 
really solid. Having got a few of these, the trick really is to get some pressure on it and just as you're pushing it in, move it up and down because that sort of means you're smearing and closing and squishing that, that glue, that bonding. And you get it on the panel and you can feel it when it's compressed enough and you can just, you can feel how solid that is. So to remove these, you're gonna need a pick and uh, I've got two here um, that work well. So I'm gonna use this. Now there's a pipe that's inside here that you just pull out. So you just grab it and pull it out. So you can see here, I've got it in my hand. So that's, that's an infill and that's what gives that rubber its strength. Now, you should then just be able to pop this out. They are strong, it's tempered glass, so you don't have to be too frail with it. Okay, so that is our quarter light out. So unlike the side panels, uh, the quarter panels for the rear um, are handed because the other one's got a section missing for the hinge. And you also obviously have front and rear again. So this is a nice, smooth, shiny side. That's the outside. And then we've got the printed edge here. The VGS logo goes at the bottom. So you can see it from the outside. Let me just swivel the camera around. And you'll see on here that we're just gonna offer it up into place like that. You just need to make sure that these two pieces of glass are not touching. You definitely need to leave at least one, if not two mil gap, and we'll fill that later. Um, but if they're touching, it, they're gonna smash when you're driving. Start from the bottom, lay it on, there we go. And then just, I'm just going up and down, get it nice and flat. There we go. And I want a little mill gap on there, just down there, you can just see. And then you wanna make sure that the bottom of it again is lined up with your side panel. Make sure all your shot lines are even. That's our gap and we've got it even all the way to the top. We've got our top edge on both pieces of glass the same and at the bottom. And then if we go across to here, we've got a little bit of the bodywork there, but that's fine as long as it's the same all the way up. Okay, so we're nearly halfway there. Uh, I've just removed the rear wheel, the very nice Overvinch wheel. Um, and as I said before, it just made me think, so this glass doesn't suit every vehicle, but it kind of was halfway there with this vehicle because it's got a few modern touches like the LED lights, it had the overfinch wheels and the panoramic glass, this thing really sets it off. So just to finish up, we're gonna to have to remove this glass. This is probably the bit I'm most nervous about because there's no filler strip on this and these uh, inherently are quite weak and they could shatter. So I'm gonna just remove the wiper arm for now, then I'm gonna offer the glass up, you'll see what it looks like, and if we're lucky, there'll be enough of a gap. I don't want it touching, because again, if there's any vibrations of the glass touching the metal, it's gonna crack and smash while you're driving. Okay, so we've got our glass. What we need to make sure, I think it is gonna fit. Yeah, perfect. Right, I'm a bit nervous, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna sacrifice this rubber piece. Right, I'm gonna, you got it? There you go, all yours. <laughs> that was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Just obviously feed it round. Okay, so we've got our fill trim in here and that really sits nicely. There's a little there's sort of an air pocket sponge pad in there that's gonna sit against the glass nicely. And again, when we fit it, I'll show you from the inside. But you've seen me do this already. I'll put it in time-lapse and you can watch me do the rear door. You probably can't see it, but that's the one I'm proudest of. <laughs> Well, that has actually got a ridge on it and that's what you're aiming for. So you'll get there after you've done three or four of the panels. <laughs> you'll
you'll have it done. There we go. So you haven't got quite as much room to wiggle because you've got that hole. But the good thing about the hole is it, it helps you get it central. So there's a lot of it in there. So we're gonna try and scoop that out. I tried to line it up on this centre piece here on the, on the hole where the spindle is for the, uh, the rear wiper, but that meant that it was slightly too low on this edge and we really wanted it to be level on both the rear quarter and the rear door glass. So we've done that now and uh, yeah, I think it looks a lot better. So we'll just make sure when we put this one on it lines up as well and yeah, really pleased. So we've got all the glass panels in place. That all went swimmingly. Um, now all I've got to do is just seal this rear corner here with some uh, mastic, the front edge as well to reduce the wind noise. And then we're pretty much done. Um, so you do also get this PU50 included in the kit. So you don't need to go and get anything else. I did actually run out of wet wipes or I've probably got like one or two left. And this is a crucial thing you need to do this properly. So if you don't have wet wipes to hand, don't attempt this job just yet. I think that was the best one. The first one I did. Well, folks, there you have it. So this is the morning after, and I'm really pleased how this has come out. You can kind of see what I mean about working best on a dark vehicle because it just gives it another little edge. So it's not overly stated. It goes really nicely with uh, the KBX style, I think they are. Um, grills and the uh, headlight surrounds got the uh, KBX or the Brit part wing top finishes as well so it's got gloss black on there the overfinch wheels as well really set it off let me just show you this rear door so really nice that you get a proper finishing strip in here um, to tidy it all off. Now, I haven't connected these up, but this is a heated screen. You can get them heated and non-heated. Um, basically, you just need a spade on there to connect to that, spade on there to connect to that, and then that is for your um, high-level brake light. So if you wanted to fit an aftermarket one, you could get one that sticks into the glass, you can run your wire around there, and you can just have it exactly as it was before. And uh, obviously, on the inside, look, you can see just how much light it lets in. I mean, it's bonkers. So obviously, as always, I'll put a link in the description to this particular product, but this is VGS glass. There's other glass on the market. Um, in my opinion, it's not as good. Um, the key really to sort of uh, note about the other glass is the fitment's not great. The sizes aren't matched, but the biggest problem is there's ripples in those big pieces of glass. And you can see those are mirror finished on the VGS glass but you make the decision obviously everyone's got a different budget um, but if you can afford the VGS stuff um, it's definitely the best on the market I would definitely recommend it um, you get everything in the kit that you need so you're not going backwards and forwards trying to find other stuff but for me that's it uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video if you have please do give me a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed I'd definitely recommend it and I'll catch you on the next one is that getting that on camera I hope so because that is rough I mean, that is coked up. Check that out.